What's up, everybody? It's me, Steve, and on today's show, we're taking a look at the Panasonic 14mm f2.5. Now, this is the original version of Panasonic's Fast Aperture Wide Angle Prime that was released back in 2011. It has six elements in five groups, and there's no image stabilization, but that's probably not going to be too much of an issue given how wide this lens is. One of the first things you'll notice is how incredibly small this lens is. It weighs 1.9 ounces or 53.8 grams. Compared to its 28 millimeter DSLR equivalent, it looks, well, ridiculous. That's not a fair comparison given that the 28 to 80 is a zoom lens, but even compared to Canon's 40 millimeter f2.8 pancake lens, this thing is tiny. It looks more like a toy and less like a lens, but having said that, this thing performs. In terms of image quality, it produces images that are sharp, with high contrast and great color, even when shot wide open at f2.5. And likewise, autofocus is fast and accurate. I tend to shoot a lot of time lapses as B-roll for these videos, and this lens paired with my Panasonic G5 or G3 is my absolute go-to. Compared to my Samsung 16mm that I use on all of my NX cameras, the Samsung tends to constantly hunt for focus, whereas the Panasonic locks on and stays focused without any issue. So who's this lens for? Well, the most obvious answer is anyone who shoots landscapes or architecture. At 14mm or a 28mm full frame equivalent, this lens is wide enough to get a decent amount of the scene in frame. In terms of portraiture, the short answer is no as far as this lens is concerned. 14mm when held on a portrait orientation produces way too much distortion of the subject. The head looks much bigger and rounder than it does in real life, and likewise the body looks much smaller, creating almost a lollipop type effect. But having said that, this lens can actually be used for some pretty cool portraits. 14mm is a great width for being able to capture a subject and a large structure in the background without having to stand a mile away. This picture of my friend Aida at the marina is a prime example. 14mm is great for working in tight spaces, or for example, a picture like this. Now, normally I tend to shoot portraiture at around 85 millimeters or higher. However, for a shot like this, I'd practically have to stand at the top rung of a step lift. At 14 millimeters, I was literally able to stand just over the top of her and get the composition like this. Now, another great use for this lens is vlogging. This lens paired with any Panasonic or Olympus Micro Four Thirds camera actually makes for a pretty affordable setup. This lens is wide enough to get that usual selfie style shot. Add in a Joby Gorilla Pod or a small tripod and you'll have just the right look for telling the world about your unrealistically interesting life. What's up guys? Super busy day today. Got meetings all morning, then we gotta head to New York this afternoon for a project that we're working on. We're super stoked to have you guys along for the ride. I'm like 90% sure that's what vlogging is. So overall, is this lens worth it? Well, there are other more high-end wide-angle options out there for both Panasonic and Olympus, they cost about two or three times as much as this lens. And given the fact that you can find this lens for around $200 or even cheaper used, the answer is a resounding yes. This lens offers so much bang for your buck that there's really no questioning it. If you're a Panasonic or an Olympus shooter, this lens will definitely make a nice addition to your collection. Anyway, that's it for today's show, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you again in the next episode. You should do this as like at the end where I'm like... <laughs>